Today we are going to start shuffling data that was imported from Excel into different tables in Access. Hi, this is Crystal. This data was imported from Excel. It used to be on several worksheets and now it is all in one place. This company builds buildings. Each order has information for one custom product. This scenario is unlike most other businesses that have an order header with common information like order number, date, and customer, and then detail lines for product and quantity of each product. Even though the order date was not one of the columns in Excel, well, not exactly, it was calculated. As data was appended to the import table, an update query was run to calculate the order date using the date serial function. I'll put a link in the description so that you can reference the video that this was covered in. Date serial needs to know the numeric year, month, and day. The year comes from the file name, the month from the sheet name, and the day is on each row. The Excel workbook has a sheet for each month, but notice that not all the months are there. Were there no orders for these months? There were, but not all of it is in this workbook. Some of it is in other workbooks because different people entered it. This workbook has a few orders in January, February, March, and April. And then the sheets skip to August. We then have a sheet for each of the remaining months of last year. December looks like a stellar month. Oh, well, maybe just more data was entered. Until all the records are in from all the workbooks, it's hard to know what really happened. At least putting data into Access will help us consolidate and get us on the right path. From this workbook, there are 368 records for the year 2018. Each record is a separate order. Like in Excel, at the top of each column, click the filter arrow to specify criteria for just the records you want to see. These two customers are brothers. One of them got a custom building, and then a couple weeks later, his brother bought one too. Toggle the filter off to see all the records again. You can display a totals row on the bottom. Here, you can click and select the aggregate function. Add all the prices and best fit the column. But, huh, the best fit method doesn't consider the total row. So click out to see what will display. Make the column wider by dragging the right border in the column header row. Sum the manufacturer's suggested price too. Sales were actually a bit higher than suggested. Good customers often get discounts, so the higher value for price is due to options like windows and ramps. Below all the records, I will add another order. I have to look up the customer code, so I make a query showing the code and name and look at the data sheet view. And we'll cover this in more detail later. I'm just doing this real quick for now. The code for ABC Company is, hmm, ACBCOM. I copy the code and paste it on a new record. The business type is recycling. I enter the product serial number, price, manufacture date, order date, and a note. A new ID has been automatically assigned because ID is an auto number field. The totals at the bottom have changed to reflect the new sums. 
and maximize by double clicking the table title bar. This table has everything we need. So, queries and reports? No, not yet. There's more to do. Just because the data is in access doesn't mean you're done. The data needs to be structured. Customers, products, and orders are different objects. Code name and type relate to a customer. Serial number, manufacture date, and manufacturer suggested retail price relate to product. What is left is the price, order date, and note. These relate to an order. There needs to be tables to describe each object. First, we'll focus on customers. The customer code is unique for each customer, and the name should be the same if the code is the same, although this isn't always the case. ASLLIS is the Allen sisters, but here it is abbreviated. A computer wouldn't understand that and would see the name as being different. Let's see if we have any names that aren't filled out. Uncheck Select All for the filter, and then check Blanks. Ah, yes. Indeed, there is one. Copy the customer code, so we can paste it later. Show all the records, and then filter for the customer code equals what you just copied. Control V to paste. There are 18 orders for this customer, and... <laughs> Three different versions of the name, blank, ABC company, and ACB company, which is wrong. On one of the records, type is recycling, and on another, it is plumbing. Type indicates the type of business or organization if the customer is a company. Which value is right? Well, actually, they both are. The company started a recycling business because they're plumbers and they didn't like throwing away all the old pipes and fittings from their plumbing business. As their recycling project caught on, the community started bringing them useful things to recycle. They order storage buildings to organize their recyclables and their plumbing parts. In the serial number of the product sold, the last part indicates the building's size. This customer buys a lot of 8x10 buildings. That is easy to see when the data is consolidated. We can do even more when the data is normalized. Normalizing means that you have different tables for each type of object and that the fields in each table describe the object of the table they are in. Our import table isn't normalized. Objects should be separated into their own tables, customers, products, and orders. Clear the filters from name, and for code, filter for the value equals acbcom. This record has ACB company for the name, which isn't right. It was probably a typo. The same thing happened when the code was created. The customer code should be ABCcom. Toggle filter to unfiltered to show all the records. Let's make a query from the import table with the customer information. On the Create Ribbon tab, choose Query Design. I like to close the Show Table dialog box and drag what I want from the navigation pane. To see things better, resize the field list to show all the fields. Ha! Huh, the upper pane needs a little more space. In the field list, double-click fields to put them on the grid. Code, Name, and Type. Switch to Datasheet view. These records are actually the same customer, even though the name is different. Luckily, the customer code was typed in correctly. Let's sort by the customer code. 
and look at the results again. When we create customer records, we only want one record for each customer code. Right now, there are 369 records, and that is because there are 369 records in the import table. One of the problems is that there are duplicates of the same customer code. Go back to the design view of this query and change it to a totals query. You can do that by clicking the totals icon on the design ribbon tab. This adds a row to the grid labeled total. Without changing anything else, when we look at the data sheet view, again, there are still too many records and there are duplicates. That is because the aggregate function defaults to group by. And some of the columns need to be something else. Go back to the design view. Under name, change the aggregate function to max. This is short for maximum. When the values are sorted in ascending order, the last value will be used. Another reason to use max is to not get null if there are any values. A common mistake is choosing last instead of max. Most of the time, when you pick last, what you really want is max. Choose max for the type, too. Look at the data sheet. Now we have 301 records, one record for each code. The column labels show the aggregate function and field name. Remember that ABC Company had two values for type? plumbing, and recycling. Recycling was chosen because it is the maximum value when they are sorted. While max isn't always the best choice for each record, as we can occasionally see, in most cases it works just fine. So overall, max is a good choice. In Excel, where information has been entered for years, sometimes things weren't typed in the same. ACBCOM is a bad customer code, and the company name is really ABC Company. The name with ACB was chosen because it is greater than ABC. Allen, S-I-S-T-R, means Allen Sisters. As a human, we can see that. The computer thinks they're different, though. After the data is shuffled where it needs to go in access, forms will be created to add and edit data. Slowly, people will be weaned off Excel and will use access to enter and change information. Whenever you want the data in Excel to do things with it that Excel is good at, you can slice and dice to get exactly what you want. How many orders do each of these customers have? Go back to the design view of the query and count the ID field. The data sheet view shows us that ABC Company has 18 orders. This is the information we want to add to the customers table. I've already made a table for customers. Let's look at its design. The primary key is customer ID. This field is not in the import table. It is defined to be an auto number, which is a special form of long integer that automatically gets a value when records are created. The import table uses different names than this table does. That is because you shouldn't use names that access could misinterpret, such as name, and type. Field names should also be descriptive. Code isn't very descriptive. We might have a code in another table that means something different. Field names also shouldn't contain spaces or special characters, with the exception of underscore. It's important to avoid using reserved words, such as name and type. 
Alan Brown provides an excellent reference to check for these reserve words, and you'll find the link in the video description. Field names should also always start with a letter, not a number or underscore. The code field is called Cust Code. The maximum size allowed is 10 characters and a unique index is set. The order that fields are listed in doesn't matter, but it's nice for them to be logical. I normally put all key fields at the top. The reason that customer code appears above the primary key field is because there is a unique index on it. You can see the table indexes when you click the lightning bolt icon in the Show Hide group on the Design ribbon tab. Cust code is unique, so duplicate values won't be allowed. The index ignores nulls, so if the value isn't filled out yet, a new record can still go in. The other index is the primary key on Customer ID. A primary key also has to have unique values. It is possible for an auto number to get duplicate values, so it's important that a unique index always be set on an auto number. The customer name is stored in parts. Customer main, which is the company name or last name for a human, and customer A, which is the first name for a human. The data we are bringing in is not separated like this. In a future lesson, we'll parse this information into the different fields. Customer calc is a calculated field showing the full name of the customer. Until data is parsed, this will be whatever is in the main customer name field. Customer type is a text field for now. Later, this will be a long integer foreign key to look up the text type. The note field is a place for a short note that can be 50 characters. Let me go back to the calculated field for a minute and show you the equation. Pressing F2 in the Expression property will zoom it. Click the Font button so you can make the text bigger and easier to read. First comes the main name. If customer A is filled out, next will come a comma, and then a space, and then the first name. I didn't change the expression, so I'll cancel this dialog box. DTM Add and DTM Edit are tracking fields. Both have a default value using the Now function, which means the current date and time on the system clock will be recorded each time a record is created. DTM Edit can be updated on the Form Before Update event. I close the table. This takes us back to the query. On the Design ribbon tab in the Query Type group, change the query type from Select to Append. This will open the Append dialog box. Choose the Customers table and click OK. A new row gets added to the grid called Append 2. Nothing is filled out though, and that is because none of the field names are the same. When there are field names in the table to append to with the same names as what is on the grid, they will be automatically matched. Choose the field you want in the append to cell of each column. Code will go to cust code, name will go to customer main, and type will go to cust type. We'll leave append to under the count blank for now. Save this query as qapp underscore customers, and if you want, add something to the end to indicate where the data comes from. Close the query. I'm double clicking on the window menu icon. There's more than one way to close. The new query shows in the navigation pane. 
Let's go back to its design view. The column with the count of the ID field is gone because nothing was specified in the append to cell, so access didn't save it. We really don't have a field for the number of orders, and the number will change as more orders are placed, so we shouldn't have one. For now, though, just because it's interesting and might be useful, let's put the count of the orders in the customer note field. Instead of just a number, though, let's use an expression so that we know what the number means down the road. In a blank column, give yourself more space by dragging the header row right boundary to make it wider, and enter an expression. I think I'll use the zoom box, Shift F2. Alternately, you could press Control F2 for the builder, but I usually zoom it. Count, open parenthesis, and then brackets around ID since it is a field. It's not necessary to type the brackets in this case, since Access will add them anyway. Then close parenthesis. Space, ampersand, space, double quote mark, space, orders, double quote mark. But if the number is 1, it shouldn't have an S on the end. So remove the S and only add it if the count of the orders is not equal to 1. Click OK and append to the note cust field. This number won't be dynamic, which means it won't change. It will just give us how many orders each customer had when these records were created. Save the query. It already has a name. Look at the datasheet view to see if this is what you want. Oops! We get an error. Group by can't be used for the expression since count is in the equation. The aggregate function should be what? Expression. Now we go to the datasheet view and we see what we want. You could name the calculated field instead of leaving it as expr1. The name, however, doesn't matter. We're only appending data to another table. If the number of orders is 1, there is not an S on the end of order. And there is an S when there is more than one order. We actually haven't put this data into the customer's table yet. Go back to the design view of the query and run it. Click Run. That looks better. No error. 301 records will be appended. Open the customers table. There they all are. What if we run the append query again? At first, it looks like it's going to add the data again. Uh-oh! It didn't add 301 records due to table key violations. That would be the unique index on the customer code protecting us. The data is already there. Adding duplicates is not allowed. Even though the mouse is pointing to yes, that won't do anything. You could choose no to do nothing also. We still have more data to shuffle. Records need to be appended to products and orders. We'll cover that later. To summarize, you learned how to select the data you want to append to another table, create an append query, and you learned how unique indexes prevent duplicates. Sorry about the mouse trails being on when I recorded this. Hopefully the multiple pointer arrows weren't too distracting. Do you need help? Do you want to learn? Let's connect. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.